Serge Tankian and Tom Morello are joining us tonight. As you probably know, Serge is the lead singer and instrumentalist from the band System of a Down, and Tom is the legendary guitarist of the recently reunited Rage Against the Machine. Both have new solo projects. Tom just released a debut album under the name of the Night Watchman entitled One Man Revolution, and Serge is finishing work on his record entitled Elect the Dead. With a passion for political and social activism beyond their love of music, these two formed Axis of Justice, a nonprofit organization dedicated to bringing musicians, fans of music, and grassroots political organizations together to fight for social justice. Gentlemen, it's good to have you here. Pleasure. Tom, um, what's going on? Sir, <laughs> Um, what led you to to form Axis of Justice? Uh, Axis of Justice, the, the genesis of it was uh, a trip that I made to an OzFest concert about seven years ago now. I was at San Bernardino and I was appalled by the number of white power and Nazi tattoos I saw guys comfortable flying at the show, where on the main stage every single one of the bands on the you know, headlining on the main stage had at least one non-white member in the band. And I was like, yeah, this, is my, this is my music too, like how, it, like, this is not like some white power rally, this is a heavy metal show when I'm down and what, what's the problem? The next year, System was headlining OzFest and Serge and I got together to have formed the Axis of Justice organization and had an anti-racist message at an Axis of Justice booth at every one of the shows. That's how it started. And we had a number of organizations from Amnesty International to the Armenian National Committee of America to a number of uh, nonprofit organizations. We became an umbrella for different nonprofits at different, you know, festivals. And these festivals, uh, people with booths often call these festivals. You know, as I, I did Lollapalooza like in 1851, <laughs> and um, and Perry was all about the booths. You yeah, know, yeah, he's yeah. going to get you know, the pro gun and the anti gun people all together and just let everyone decide. <laughs> yeah. uh, God sort of out. Yeah. yeah. And um, so I'm, I'm sure it was fairly easy for you to start uh, accruing people to set up and, and hand out pamphlets. And yeah, that's great. That's great. Yeah, the, um, thing, the, thing we were, the thing we were surprised about was that was the inception of, of Axis of Justice. And then it grew from there very organically. We, we tried to answer the question that fans have asked us for you know, 10 years or so is, how do I get involved? You know, kids who are either motivated by the music or are motivated aside from the music, looking for ways to plug in in their suburb or in their inner city or in their country town. Um, you know, to get involved in issues of social justice. So then we tried to make accessofjustice.org a watering hole for potential activists uh, that, are, that were reached by our music. Was there at any point a, a, a tipping point, besides the, like the OzFest thing, seeing all the, the yahoos or the white power stuff, was there something that, that, that you saw, perhaps, or that, that a tipping point for you, where you said you, you had to be poli a politically active person? Growing up, um, the issue of the, the hypocrisy behind the denial of the Armenian genocide in America and other countries made me um, wonder how many other truths are there that are not displayed, you know, for, for our consumption. And, you know, it made me go, shit, man, there's so many injustices out there. This is just the tip of the iceberg. So it made me start researching, and I started becoming involved in other activism, other political activities. And when we formed Axis, we, I think we both felt the need to have some type of representation with our fans above and beyond our just our music and our art, which is expressive enough, uh, given, but um, to be able to actually do social change, to be a, to be able to actually make change happen, and um, that's that's really a part of it. And it happened by accident, really, yeah. or whatever you believe in. Yeah, accident, yeah. yeah. You know? <laughs> Let's talk about some of the, su the successes that you guys have achieved. Uh, the uh, the McDonald's thing is very interesting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's, there's been there's been many, but uh, we'll, we'll flush well, that one. Out sure, the, sure. The uh, the Immokalee. There's a place in Florida called Immok the town of Immokalee, where most of the produce is grown for Burger King, McDonald's, Taco Bell. And a few years ago, Access of Justice was involved in supporting the Immokalee farm workers in a campaign against Taco Bell. It was to get just like the barest minimum, you know, like a living wage, decent working conditions in the fields, you know, the lack of, of pesticides on the workers. And they were 100% successful in their, uh, in their struggle against Taco Bell to achieve those demands. We were a small part of that struggle, organized benefit concerts for it, and helped promote the boycott. The next target was McDonald's, which uh, a few weeks ago, uh, Zach De La Rocha and I actually played a benefit show. It was set to be in, uh, the kickoff of the campaign against McDonald's, but I think they heard we were coming. McDonald's caved to all the workers' demands prior to even the inception, so it turned into a victory celebration. So that's right. Do you think a musician has a responsibility uh, to talk about this stuff, either in a lyric or between songs, or, you know, to their audience? Personally, myself, I don't. I don't think, 
I don't think uh, po politic politicization uh, nor responsibility of social kind is, is something we should feel responsible for as artists. I think it comes naturally to certain people and not to others. Um, I think it's more about following your heart and doing whatever you feel is right, you know, and if that's a part of what you do musically, then fine, and if it's not, that's fine. I think everyone feels passionate about something. A lot of artists feel passionate about something. It's just different, you know, uh, focuses. You have to admit, um, this administration, uh, either it's politicized a lot of musicians or has moved them so much to where people you wouldn't think were political or had an opinion, all of a sudden they're writing songs. Yeah. Uh, they're mouthing off at award shows yeah. and, and infuriating uh, people uh, somewhere. <laughs> um, you know, Dixie Chicks, yeah. what have you. Uh, and do, what, what do you all think about that? Well, well, I mean, bad presidents make for good music. I mean, that's, that's something that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's crystal clear. Uh, and I, I think that, that you have only one responsibility as an artist, and that's to tell the truth as you see it. And you shouldn't, you shouldn't expect sort of non-political people to pretend they are. But I think that you're, the reason why you're seeing this, you know, this constant influx in the, over the course of the last 18 months of artists speaking out is because they're really pissed off. Not because artists are pissed off, everybody's pissed off. Yeah. It was the worst administration in the history of our country, yeah. you know, um, both domestically and internationally. And we've got a war criminal in the White House. You know, we've got civ civil liberties rolled back here. Gas prices are at an all-time high. And the environment may not be there for our children in their old age. Um, there's reason, you know, artists write songs about it. My hope is that beyond artists writing songs about it, that, you know, students stand up in their campuses, that carpenters do it through their carpenters union, that people, in whatever their vocation is, uh, let their voices be heard. I think it's important not to react and to proact, you know, in terms of artists, in terms of songs that we write. You know, like, uh, before the Iraq War, we uh, did a video with Michael Moore called Boom, you know, and that, that actually landed on MTV the day the war was starting, you know, and it was based on all of, all of the... Um, 10 million people protesting before the war against the war that hadn't happened yet you know and um, you know, I think it's important it everyone can can always come back and say when the whole public already agrees with you it's easy to say this is wrong but it's hard to say it when everyone's yelling at you and taking your song off the radio you know and uh, blaming you for stuff and calling you anti-american just because you're following your heart and actually saying what you feel and putting your ass on the line yeah, being wholly American. Yeah, yeah. being wholly American, very American. Yeah.